Hello and welcome back. We're doing part two this week on Fly Your Flag. Now, if you remember, last time we had all those shirtings and scraps and all that good stuff to cut out. We had two size blocks. It was up to you what size you wanted to cut. You could cut anywhere from one and a half to four and a half inches. You cut a square and then a rectangle. If you're lost, make sure to watch part one of Fly Your Flag. Or I think it's, oh, I think it's called Let's Hear It for the Red, White, and Blue. I think that's what we ended up putting it on because the name of the pattern belonged to somebody else. And we told you where you could go ahead and get your pattern. So you might want to check out that video first and then make sure you come to this one. But now today, today we've got everything all cut out. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our units together so that we can make our block and get started on our pattern. I'm so excited. So thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you stopping by the workroom today. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now you can see, I always put my hands in my pocket, it's a bad habit. Now you can see all those shirting piles that we had are all cut into these nice sized rectangles and squares. And we have our red and our white and our blue. So we're all ready to get started. But this time, this time we're just going to focus on the blue. So what we need to do is we need to divide our blues into two piles. You need to have a dark pile and you need to have a light pile. Now how do you figure out whether it's a light or a dark? There's not really any right or wrong answer to that. It's what looks light to you and usually what I'll do is squint my eyes at my fabric and whichever color or shade or hue pops out the most, that's the pile that I put it into. So when you look at these, you see a light, a medium, and then a dark. So for what we need to do today, this would be our light pile, this would be our dark pile. Now I have this one here that has a lot of white to it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into my light pile and continue on until I get this entire grouping of fabric um, separated into two piles. And then I'm going to turn around and do the same thing with my squares. Now my squares, I need a dark and I need a light. And you will need to do the same thing with your pieces and parts that you have all cut out. Now, don't worry if yours is a different size than mine. It doesn't matter. Remember, we're trying to use up our scraps. So if you cut yours at one and a half inches, they're just going to look smaller. If you cut them at two and a half, you're going to look like me. If you cut them at three and a half or four and a half, they're going to be a little bit bigger. It doesn't matter any way, shape, or form. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and finish separating out our fabrics into our piles, and then we're going to meet at the sewing machine. Okay, so now we're back over at the sewing machine. We've got our little piles, and it doesn't matter that you didn't do the whole pile. It doesn't matter if you only have a few or if you've got a whole slew of them. It, it does not matter. It really doesn't. You basically want just something you can work with and you want to have um, a, a good handful of each one. And you want to have your light pile, your dark pile of rectangles. You want your light pile, or excuse me, your dark pile and your light pile of your squares. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mix and match. So if I'm taking a light square, I am going to put that with a dark rectangle. And all we're going to do is line up across the short edge of the rectangle here. We're going to put it into our sewing machine. We've got a regular 
um, 1.8 stitch length. We have anywhere from a size 10 to a size 14 sewing needle, whatever you use in your machine for piecing. Um, I really don't see much used to having a needle any bigger than a 10 or an 11 because this is such a lightweight fabric anyway. Remember, we're using old shirtings and um, trying to use up stuff and keep fabric out of our landfill. We don't need a great big hole with it, um, so we don't need a great big size needle. But remember, you got to use what you have. Okay, so now we have taken one of our light squares and paired it up with a dark rectangle or dark to our light, whatever we need to do to make the fabric work. We've stitched across and we've created this unit. Now, it takes two of these to make a block, okay? So you need to sew two of these to make a block. And you wanna make sure that you have a really good variety of fabrics in here because otherwise it's gonna get really boring really fast. Now don't be afraid to use the wrong or the right sides of these fabrics because you're gonna get a completely different look when you do that. So spice it up a little bit, live dangerously. So on the wrong side of the fabric, you know, make it look good, make it look good. Remember, you're in the driver's seat. If you like it, that's all that matters. If you don't, well, then don't do it because you're never going to like it if you do. If you do, so save yourself the trouble of having to rip it out. All right, so now I have one unit where I've used a dark square and a light rectangle and I have one unit where I've used a light square and a dark rectangle. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to lay this one this way. Oh see I can't use that because these are the exact two fabrics. So let me sew up one quick just so it looks a little different because otherwise I don't know guys that might be that might be oh I don't know it might be kind of icky. So let's spice up our life a little bit here. I'll make another one quick. We'll put these together. We'll zap it under the machine. And I might add too, this is a fantastic place. When you're working on scrap quilts, this is a fantastic place to use up all those extra bobbins that you have laying around or little bits of thread on a spool. Um, I like to clean off all of my leftover bobbins because I like to give people a nice, fresh, thick, full bobbin when we work on their quilt. Um, so I will clean off my bobbins. I'll wind them onto my sewing machine bobbins, and then I have a bevy of different fabrics to, or excuse me, different threads to use up. And, oh, I, you know, since we're working in the blue family, I've decided I'm going to clean out all of my light-colored bobbins. Or if I have like little bits of leftover thread, then I'll go ahead and use those too. But, you know, just try and keep the, um, the values the same. You don't really want to use black on a light blue or white. So save your blacks for your darker colors. Okay, so back to our pattern now. In order to make our block, we needed two of these units. We're placing one this way. And we're placing the second one this way. And all we've done is flip them so that they're opposite each other. There is no matching of the seams. It's just nice, straight, clear sewing. I love it. This is like a perfect, perfect leader and ender quilt. If you don't know what a leader and an ender quilt is, I highly suggest you hop on over to Quiltville and check out Bonnie Hunter's blog. She will talk about using leaders and enders when you start and stop your sewing pieces. And it gives you, by putting your piecing pieces together and using those as your leaders and enders, which helps you from your threads being gobbled up into the throat of the sewing machine. 
But by the time that you're done with that, um, a good project can almost render you a free quilt, if you will, because you weren't planning to get one done, but by using it for a leader and an under, the blocks really start to stack up. Okay, so there's our unit. This is our block. And now we need to make a whole bunch of these blocks. Um, so refer to your patterns on how many of these blocks that you need to make. Um, and then once you get those made, we'll go ahead and head back to the design wall and we'll put these up on the design wall and lay them out and then we'll sew our blocks together. And then our, our star field, if you will, on our flag quilt will be done and we'll have one part finished on our quilt. And then all we have to do from there is just put together our stripes and then we're going to have a quilt. But as you can see, this is super, super, super simple to put the star field together. So I will leave you to it. Separate out your squares and your rectangles. Sew a light to a dark. Mix it up, match it up, make it look pretty. You're going to sew two units. You're going to flip one of the units. Sew them together to make a square. That's where we're at for this. So as you can see, I have a whole bunch of them that I need to get sewn together. And then I will meet you at the design wall. So happy stitching. Okay, so we're back to the design wall and we have our blocks put together. You've got part one and part two put together to make a solid block. They're gonna look like this. Then it's just gonna be a matter of placing your blocks in however many rows that you want. Now, there's a couple things to think about here. Um, for those of us that are making ours scrappy, we are not really gonna know how many rows we need. Um, for those of us that are following the pattern, you're gonna know exactly how many you need and exactly how many rows across and down you're gonna lay them out. But when you're working with scraps, remember one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half inch squares and rectangles, then you have to you have to eyeball. So you got to look at this with your striped areas and you have to decide, is the star field big enough? Does it look balanced? Does it look good to your eye? If it doesn't, you're going to know right away if you need to add or subtract from it. And the easiest way to do that is to leave this end and this end open and to put your stripes here and usually one row of the white one row of the red you're gonna know if this field is big enough or not um but for now you want to be able to lay out enough of them so that you can get a really good idea of how many more you need to make if you didn't make enough or how many more you need to add or if it's way too big for the length of the strip for the size of the quilt you want to make, then you know you have to take some of them away and then either make a pillow with them or a cute little zipper pouch or a tote bag or a pot holder or whatever. We can come up with things to do with the leftover blocks. That's not a problem. So give me a minute here. I'm going to put some blocks up on the wall and arrange them accordingly. And then we'll decide if it looks good. If not, we'll move it around. Invariably, it's scrappy. You're going to end up with pieces that are next to each other that are the same fabric. And, you know, you just have to go with it because it, it kind of mirrors life. Nothing's ever perfect and it never goes out or comes out exactly the way you have it planned so you have to kind of learn to just roll with it and what you might find out is while you're rolling with it you just might like how it turned out versus how you had it planned to begin with so that's my little sage advice for you for today um 
but as we get these put up here now see i think this is going to look good this is a pretty nice little star field when i did my adding based on my size because i want to end up with about a king size quilt i needed about 96 of these square units uh do i have them well you tell me <laughs> see we've got a whole pile to go and they're gonna need to be pressed and they're gonna need to be laid out and we're going to have to go from there. But this is enough for me to get you started on part two. And then we can work on part three. Part three, we're going to be putting together our stripes. And then we'll talk a little bit more about balancing our star field with our stripes to make sure everything comes out really nice. So once you get this to the size you think you want it, it's very simple. We're going to add this one here and we're going to stitch our quarter inch seam. Now, if you look at that carefully, we're not matching anything up except for the beginning and the ending. And then we're going to zip our quarter inch seam and that's going to connect two of our blocks. And we're going to continue this all the way down, all the way down the row. Once we have the row done, then we'll come down here and we'll connect this row and then we'll connect this row and however many more rows you need to connect in order to make your star field. Now, once you have your rows connected, you are going to have to match and you are going to have to match just this one area here. You're going to match here. So it'll be here and here all the way down your strip so you'll have a little bit of matching but it won't be too bad at all and it'll go together really really simple and quick but the long rows that's the easiest part because there's nothing that you need to match you can just sew but when you get your rows together you're going to match here and you're going to match here and you're going to match here and here and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And when I say match, I mean you're going to pin them. You're going to nest them together like we do. Put your pin in, flip it up, make sure that it lines up and it looks really good. And then you're going to go ahead and sew the whole row together. So that's the simple instructions. So block to block to block to block to block. And row to row to row and you're in the driver's seat you're either going to follow the pattern and you're going to put however many blocks across and down you need to make the star field or if you're doing scrappy you're going to eyeball this now if you're doing one and a half inches the little teeny ones and you just want to make a placemat your star field is only going to be about this big it's not going to be this big it's going to be about this big because you want it to balance with your stripes and remember we can always cut and trim in order to make this work because these blocks are so forgiving if we don't like it we'll cut it and we'll make it go away so that's where I'm going to leave you this week. Um, next week, we're going to take a break because we've got our holiday um, video where we're going to teach you how to make the pin cushions that we're going to give away at our guild for our Christmas. That's my little presentation gift to the guild. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how you can do that too. And then you can share in the holiday fun as well. So then after we get done with the pin cushions, then we're going to come right back to our Let's Hear It for the Red, White, and Blue, and it'll be part three, and we'll start working on our red and white stripes. Okay, so you got two weeks to get your star field all put together and ready to go to add our stripes to it. So with that said... Thank you all for coming in today. I really appreciate your stopping in. I really appreciate your watching this video and supporting our channel because I just really love to bring you guys 
really fun and interesting ideas in how to use up your scraps and how to keep sewing when times get tough and where can you find the materials in order to keep your craft going and basically you know save the planet use the fabric it's a wonderful wonderful way to it's a win-win all the way around so don't be afraid to harvest fabric from your old clothes uh, you really can make some really cute and interesting projects out of it. Um, I wish you all the very, very best. Happy stitching. I will see you next week. Thanks. Bye for now.